When you process film at home, one of the first steps is getting your film into a development tank. But the film can't just be thrown in there. It has to be loaded onto a reel and then placed in a tank. The reel ensures that the chemistry can cover all parts of the film to give you nice, evenly processed negatives. Hey, what's up? My name is Linus and this is Dan. And today we're gonna to be walking you through how to load film into various processing tanks. You should always practice loading your tanks and reels beforehand to get comfortable, especially since when you're actually doing this, you'll need to do so in complete darkness and you won't be able to see what you're doing. Good news is you don't need a dark room to load your film. All you need is a changing bag and you're good to go. We're gonna show you how to load a wide variety of reels for different film formats from the most popular products available. Check the timestamps below to find your specific developing tank and film format combo. Now let's get started. All right, let's talk prepping your 35 millimeter film. Before we get started, notice the light bulb icon in the top left hand corner. If it's off, all the steps need to be performed in the dark. If it's on, you can keep your lights on. If your 35 millimeter film has been wound all the way into the cassette with no leader showing, then you need to use a cassette opener to retrieve your film. In absolute darkness, place the mouth of the cassette opener on the bottom cap of the film cassette until it catches. Then pull up and away from the cassette until it's completely removed. Then you're free to pull out the internal spool that the film's attached to. But be careful, those edges might be sharp. Next, cut the leader side off between the perforations. So apart from opening your entire cassette, you can use one of these leader retrievers to pull the film out. With your jobo reel in the smaller 35 millimeter position and the duo clip removed, insert the end of the film into the opening. You should be able to push the film easily through and it will start loading onto the reel. If at any point the film seems stuck or does not want to advance further, use the grooves on either side of the reel to physically advance the film forward a little bit at a time with the pads of your index finger in an alternating motion. Once you reach the other end of the film that has an internal spool attached to it, cut the spool off and advance the end of the film past the opening of the reel. Slide the reels onto the center column and place them in the developing tank. Attach the light trap securely. 120 film comes wound in spools with a backing paper that's slightly larger and wider than the film itself. In total darkness, remove the tape holding the roll together and unravel the backing paper until you feel the film. Oh, and there should be about 10 to 12 inches of backing paper before you reach the film. Start by adjusting your Jobo 1501 reel by twisting it counterclockwise until the reel unlocks itself. Extend both sides of the reel to the maximum distance and twist clockwise until the reel locks itself in the 120 position. Insert the end of the film onto the opening of the reel. You should be able to push the film easily through and it will start loading onto the reel. If at any point the film seems stuck or does not want to advance any further, Use the grooves on either side of the reel to physically advance the film forward a little bit at a time with the pads of your index fingers in an alternating motion. Once you reach the other end of the film that is taped onto the backing paper, gently remove the film from the backing paper and tape. Then, advance the end of the film past the opening of the reel. If you're loading two rolls of 120 film onto the same reel, make sure the red duo clip is attached to the reel, but the tooth is not in the film reel's path. Advance the first roll onto the center of the reel until it will not advance any further. Now, push the tooth of the red duo clip onto the path of the film reel. Repeat the normal 120 film loading steps to load your second roll of 120 film onto the reel. The second roll will not advance further than the tooth of the red duo clip, which will block its path and prevent the rolls from overlapping. Once the film is loaded onto the Jobo 1501 reels, slide the reels onto the black central column and place everything in the tank. Attach the light trap securely. Locate the two pointy tabs on the inside of the reel. Underneath those points is the opening for your film. Pull your film through the opening until it passes through the ball bearings. Twist the right side of the reel back and forth in a ratcheting motion. That will advance your film onto the reel. Once you reach the other end of the film with the internal spool attached to it, cut the internal spool off and continue to advance the film until the end of the film is past the opening of the reel. Slide your reels onto the center column and place inside the developing tank. Then attach the light trap securely. You can load a single roll of 120 on a Patterson reel using a similar method, however you must lock the reel into the 120 position. Locate the large, flat tabs and feed the film into the slot underneath the upper lip of the tabs. 
Now, push that film through that opening until it passes the ball bearings. Twist the right side of the reel back and forth in a ratcheting motion. This will start to pull your film through the reel. Once you reach the other end of the film that has the internal spool attached to it, cut the spool off and advance the end of the film past the opening of the reel. Slide the reels into the center column and place it into the developing tank. Attach the light trap securely. You can load a single roll of 120 onto an AP reel using a similar method. However, you must lock the reel into the 120 position. First, locate the clip at the center of the reel. Then, you want to pull down on that clip and insert the film. But make sure that the film is between the clip and the center of the reel. While squeezing the edges of your film so that it forms a curve, slowly begin to rotate the reel. Use the reel as a guide as to how gently you should be squeezing the edges of the film. If the film is not loaded correctly, the film might overlap and result in portions of unprocessed images. Be careful, squeezing too hard might cause little crescent-shaped marks to appear on your negatives after processing. If you feel like your film is beginning to snag, stop, slowly pull your film back out and readjust. You don't want to force anything as this can damage your film. Once you reach the end of the film with the internal spool still attached to it, be sure to cut that off and continue to advance your film onto the reel until the end of the film is past the opening of the reel. Then once your film is entirely loaded onto the reel, place it inside your developing tank and attach the light trap. First, orient the reel so that the top engraving is facing up. Hold your sheet of 4x5 film by the long edges with the emulsion facing inwards. Gently apply tension to your film so it forms a curve and then insert it into the side of the reel until it stops at the horizontal crossbars. Then, begin to slowly release tension until the film uncurves and seats itself into the innermost grooves. To check for proper groove alignment, lightly touch the edges of the film near the grooves. Prepare the next sheet of film in the same way by holding it emulsion side facing inwards. Then, insert it into the reel into the next available groove. To check if your film has been seated in the correct grooves, go ahead and gently touch the edges of the film on the top, bottom, and sides. You should feel a small gap, a few millimeters wide, between the sheets on all sides. Repeat the previous steps until up to six sheets of 4x5 film are loaded onto the reel and checked for proper groove alignment. Then, you want to insert the reel onto the central column and place it into your developing tank. Always make sure that light trap is closed securely. Before you load your tank, make sure the rubber o-ring is intact and properly seated in the groove of the light trap. Confirm that the plastic baffles and rack are in the correct position and orientation. They're labeled clearly. The outer baffle should be in the outermost slot and inserted so that the end shows three prongs. The middle baffle should be in the middle slot and inserted so that the end shows two prongs. The thicker plastic rack should be inserted so that the two channels are facing inward towards the center of the tank. Once the tank has been checked for proper assembly, you're ready to load the film into the film holders. Grip one of the film holders by the large flat tab near the opening. Holding the sheet of film by the upper right hand corner with the emulsion side facing you, Put it into the film holder with the emulsion side facing up. With your finger, feel for the fingers. There should be four fingers both on the left and the right side and one small finger at the end of the holder. The film should be seated under all nine of those fingers. Load the other side of the film holder the same way. Once the film holder is loaded, grip the film holder by the large flat tab and slide it into one of the slots in the tank. Repeat the above for the second film holder and slide it into the other slot in the tank. And lastly, make sure the light trap is secured. We realize that there are plenty of other film processing tanks out there, but what we showed today are just some of the most commonly available for processing your own film at home. And what's most important is finding a process that works best for you. If you have any other questions or topics you'd like covered in the realm of darkroom supplies, drop a comment below. And please like and subscribe for more videos from us. All right, see ya.